Hey guys, my name is Matsumio, and welcome to another episode of Sunday Mailbox. This is a video series where you, the viewer, can submit your gaming related questions, and then I will give my humble opinion on them. To get the formatties out of the way real quick, if you would like to submit your own question that could be featured in an upcoming episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below, or by sending me a Facebook and Twitter message. The first question for today comes from Julian, and it is, what do you think about an attacking operator in Rainbow Six Siege with a deployable bag of armor-piercing bullets to counter Rook? Well, there are some things that I really like about this idea, but then there's also a lot of aspects about it that I'm definitely not too keen on. Uh, the one thing that I do like about it is that we'd finally have an operator in the game that directly counters his gadgets. Now, you could argue that headshots are his counter, which is a very valid argument, and it's one of the reasons why I don't think that we really need something like this in Rainbow Six Siege, but it would have now, finally, some interaction and some counterplay when you are playing against this operator. You look at a lot of the operators in Rainbow Six Siege, and they have this type of interaction. You've got Sledge and Castle, Thatcher and Mute, Thatcher against basically any electronic device, there's IQ against Pulse, I mean there's a lot of examples of it, and we don't have that for Rook right now. Now there are all other operators in the game that don't have a direct counter, I mean Doc would be a really good example of this as well, but I think that it's a good thing to have these counters in the game because not only does it make things more interesting, but it also makes you think more about how to approach different objectives and how you're going to approach winning that round. And so what I like about this idea is that we'd finally have an interaction. You would now need to think more about selecting Rook because if the enemy does have his direct counter, he's going to be completely nullified or he's not going to be as powerful as he was. Now, my issues with this idea, and there's, there's many of them, is that depending on how you balance and implement it into the game, it could either be pretty much useless or blatantly overpowered. If the way it worked is that the armor piercing just nullified Rook's armor, but didn't actually increase the damage of your bullets, then I don't think that'd be all that interesting. While I like the idea of having direct counters in the game, this guy would literally only be used to counter Rook's armor, which just kind of sucks. I mean, yeah, it would reduce the pick rate of Rook, but if this guy was added to the game and Rook's pick, pick rate plummets, there'd be, there'd be less of a reason to play as this armor-piercing operator. Like, like, yeah, there'd be that dynamic, but it really wouldn't be all that interesting. If you play as Thatcher and they don't have a mute, it doesn't make Thatcher obsolete. Like, you can still use his EMP against cameras, you can take out Capkin traps, like, he's not worthless at that point. Like, he still has his usefulness, but if all this did was directly counter Rook's armor and that's it, I just don't think that would be all that viable. Now, the problem that we run into, though, is that if you say, oh, well, then why don't we just make it increase the damage output of the guns? Well, if we do that, I feel like then he would become a must-pick. The way that Rook's armor works is that it essentially requires one or two more bullets for an enemy to drop you depending on the weapon that they're using. So if the enemy isn't going for headshots and they're just trying to rip into your body, if you have Rook's armor, it just gives you kind of one more bullet buffer. And so, of course, the counter to this is if we ha if we did have these armor piercing rounds, the thought behind it is that it would just make you do more damage so that you would require one less bullet to drop someone. So if they do have Rook's armor, everything would be completely neutralized, but if they don't have Rook's armor, that means you're dying significantly faster than you were in the past, and it's for that very reason why I feel like if you gave that to every single one of the attacking team members, it would just be way too good. And so it's for these very reasons why I would not expect to have something like this add in a Rainbow Six Siege. Conceptually, it sounds very interesting, like at least on paper it sounds like it might be a good idea to have more direct counters in the game, uh, but hopefully you can now understand, at least from my viewpoint, why this may not be a very good idea. The next question comes from Wesley and it is, so what do you think about a trench game mode in Battlefield 1? Something like a tug of war with five trenches and the two teams have to rush the trenches. This sounds very similar to the game Verdun. Uh, if you've ever played that, the way that their game mode worked is that you'd have, of course, two sides, each have their own trenches, and each team would have their chance of rushing the other team's trench to try to take it over and capture for themselves. If you were successful in capturing it, the other team would have to fall back to another trench and then you kind of rinse and repeat. What's fun about this game mode is that, first of all, it revolved around trench warfare, which is what a lot of World War I was all about, but it was also way more authentic. I mean, this was what basically the World Wars were all about. Fighting in trenches, people running out into no man's land, and dying. I mean, I know how horrific that sounds, but that's exactly what it was. And so if they added a game mode in Battlefield 1, where it was all about just getting into the enemy team's trenches, 
and trying to take them over, that could be really cool conceptually. What I love about Verdun and a lot of these World War I or World War II games is that the trench warfare is really interesting. I mean, there has been some times when I played like Red Orchestra, for example, and I know Red Orchestra is World War II, but they have some really complex trenches with different networks, there's a lot of different flanking routes, and if they were able to incorporate more of those complex trenches into Battlefield 1 and have this tug of war game mode, that could be a lot of fun. Now, the reason why I suspect we never got something like this in Battlefield 1 is that they would have had to design their maps entirely around this game mode. You can't just have a conquest map and then slap this on in, or I guess you could try, but I feel like you would need to design these trenches and these maps from the ground up with this game mode in mind. I have a suspicion that at least at one point during development, DICE had to make the decision, do they focus on making this more of an authentic World War I game, which is entirely designed around this trench combat, or do they go the safe route and make large conquest maps, which admittedly they're very good at. Clearly we got the conquest version. Now I'm not criticizing DICE for doing this, I think that Battlefield 1 is an amazing game. I love conquest, I think it's an amazing game mode, but I would have wished that at least maybe for a couple of maps, it would have been nice if they really tried to delve into this trench warfare and flushed out that combat a bit. Even if we had this game mode on a couple of maps, maybe there was only two or three maps in the game that had this game mode, I think that would be a lot of fun. Like, I think that that could add a lot of flavor into the game, and who knows, maybe they'll add something like this in a future DLC. And so I'm right there with you. I would love to have more trench combat in Battlefield 1. I understand why DICE tried to stray away from it a bit, because it does deviate a lot from their normal conquest design, uh, but I'm really crossing my fingers that we do get something similar to this with their upcoming contents. The next question comes from Ronnie, and it is, what do you think about an emote system for Rainbow Six Siege? For the people who got the game, but can't communicate through voice, they can use an emote to say, reinforce that, cover my six, move in to clear, etc, etc. That doesn't sound like a bad idea. If they added in some sort of wheel or command system, similar to Battlefield, where you held down a button and it'd bring up a menu where you could then quickly just switch on over to what you wanted to say to your team, that could be a very useful way at communicating, but not using voice comm. I mean, the perfect world, everyone would be using VoIP. Everyone would be using voice chat and making the call-outs as fast as they can, but we don't live in a perfect world, and some people don't have a microphone. Some people are shy, some people don't want to talk to people on the internet, some people don't want to deal with that. And so having a way of being able to communicate on the fly very quickly with a press of a button, that could be a great way of adding in a, a layer of teamwork that we don't really have right now. This would especially be great on console. On PC, it's not horrible if you don't want to speak on a microphone because technically you can just type it out to your teammates. Even that's not really all that useful because then they're having to look down and no one's really going to want to look down for callouts because that, of course, makes them look away from their crosshair. But on console, I don't even think you can type. Or if you can, it's going to take forever. You're never going to want to do it. And so to have a prompt or a command wheel that can let you make these callouts on the fly might be a great addition for Siege. And so let me know what you guys think about this. Do you think that this is getting annoying? Granted, hopefully they would do a good job of adding it in so that people couldn't spam these prompts. I wouldn't want my teammates constantly pestering us saying, get on the objective or go, go, go. And every four seconds they spam that, like that would get really annoying. But I think if they added it properly, this could be a great addition. And so give me your guys' thoughts down below. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is about it for today's Sunday Mailbox. I hope you enjoyed. As always, if you would like to submit your own question for an upcoming episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below or by sending me a Facebook and Twitter message. But until tomorrow, guys, have a good one and take it easy.